November of 1963 was the assassination of Ngo Dinh Diem, Ngo Dinh Nhu, and then a few weeks later, the assassination of, of John F. Kennedy. This was when the North Vietnamese would attempt to win the war outright, topple the Saigon regime, and basically present the United States with a fait accompli so that it wouldn't deepen its involvement and transition to military intervention. In the early part of 1964, Johnson, I think, is getting frustrated. The war is not going particularly well. Even with lots of U.S. support, the South Vietnamese military is steadily losing more ground. And I think he's decided, Johnson, from the day he comes into power after Kennedy's assassination, that he will not be the president who lost Vietnam. So when he has this conversation with Robert McNamara, who's really his most important, I think, Vietnam advisor. What's notable for me is the degree to which Johnson wants to see more. What I want is somebody that can can lay up some plans to trap these guys and uh, whoop hell out of them, kill some of them. That's what I want to do. I think it underscores this notion of a fundamentally hawkish Lyndon Johnson. This notion that became very popular later which is that Americans were ignorant of Vietnam, didn't know what they were doing, they had this hubris, this exaggerated self-confidence that led them to stumble into this thing. I don't think it's true. The conversation with, with McGeorge Bundy in May is so interesting to me. Johnson here is in, I think it's fair to say, despair about the war. And the more I think of it, I don't know what in the hell uh... It looks like me, we're getting into another Korea. It just worries the hell out of me. I don't see what we can ever hope to get out of there with once we're committed. Once I believe the Chinese communists coming into it. I don't think that we can fight them 10,000 miles away from home and ever get anywhere on uh, in that area. I don't think it's worth fighting for, and I don't think we can get out. What he's conscious of is that he is about to commit young men to fight in this war. And he's doing so even while he also harbors these doubts about whether it's worth it. One what thing that is Kurt to me, worth to me, what is Laos worth to me, what is it worth to this country? I think that the Johnson administration entered the month of August 1964 looking for a pretext to be able to flex American muscle. There was an incident in the Gulf for talking where an American ship was somehow attacked by the communists in North Vietnam. Earlier in 1964, the United States launches covert raids against North Vietnam, involving also the South Vietnamese, to be sure. But they're really an American creation. And I think I should also, or we should also, at that time, Mr. President, explain this Op Plan 34A these covert operations. There's no question but what that had bearing on it. Friday night, as you probably know, we had four TP boats from Vietnam, manned by Vietnamese or other nationals, uh, attack two islands. Those raids clearly influenced the North Vietnamese to launch the initial attack against an American destroyer on the 2nd of August. And we expended, uh, oh, a thousand rounds of ammunition one kind or another against them like we probably shot up a radar station and a few other miscellaneous buildings and, and following 24 hours after that with this destroyer in that same area undoubtedly led them to connect the two events. Okay. And they, they portrayed this as being unprovoked. Earlier tonight the president told the nation the United States would take appropriate action to respond to the unprovoked attacks on U.S. naval vessels by torpedo boats of North Vietnam. I think we have pretty good evidence now that there was an attack on August 2nd, but that there was not an, a second attack on August 4th, as the administration alleged, and it was in response to this alleged second attack on the 4th that Johnson ordered retaliatory airstrikes against selected targets within North Vietnam. I was a very, very impression by the kind of resolute attitude from the American Congress for giving President Johnson the full power to intervene military in Vietnam. He gets in the aftermath of this set of strikes a congressional resolution giving the president 
as the saying goes, a kind of blank check to do what he wishes in Southeast Asia with minimal opposition. If you look at the vote, it's overwhelming uh, in both parties. But that's a little misleading because, in fact, if you listen to the debate, if you watch what lawmakers really in both parties, especially Democrats, but what they're actually saying, it's clear that they have doubts, not so much about what happened in the Gulf. What they doubt is that Vietnam is worth you know, the price of a large war. And I think they doubt that the South Vietnamese government 